here I've logged in as the SQL DBA. And this gives me an incredibly focused view of protection plans, SQL server assets, and the credentials that are, I can manage. Let's go and add a credential. SQL02 cred. So we now have a couple of options. The UI supports authentication against the Windows local OS or against an Active Directory. The user account that is used to register credentials must have the SQL Server sysadmin role and be a member of the Windows Administrator group. So how does the DBA decide which of these choices to make? It's pretty straightforward. When you use credentials that are locally defined on the client, what that really means is that the backup services that are running on the SQL servers that are to be protected are using a login account, which is a privileged SQL Server user. When you specify the credentials, the backup services on the SQL servers can use the local system built-in account, and the credentials that you specify will be utilized at the time of protection workflows. So I'm going to go ahead and save the credentials in that backup. So go ahead and enter the username, domain, and password. This screen allows you to select additional roles with whom you wish to share these SQL credentials. And those roles may be other database or backup operators with limited privileges as well. Next. And this brings us to the end of credential management. Now we use this credential to discover an instance. So I'm going to associate this credentials with the server SQL02 and discover some new databases that were created on it, test one and test two. So after you add credentials and a backup validates the credentials and starts the database and availability group discovery. And when the discovery completes, the results are displayed on the databases and or the availability groups tab. So I'm going to navigate to the databases tab and see if it discovered test one and test two with a couple of new databases. There they are. In our next video, let's go and take a look at protection.